morning, good morning. Come on in, come on in. I have joined us on this Sunday, the fourth Sunday of the month of August, the year 2024. And uh, we gather to continue to worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Our home base of New Life Church of God is here in Palmetto. But wherever you are, thanks for being a part of the body of Christ. You're welcome to worship with us. Uh, today, our message will uh, be a part two of uh, We know that God gives us a purpose, and there are details as we live every day. There are troubles, there are challenges, there are many of in the details. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, there's a, a verse there that the Apostle Paul lives, uh, says that whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. That's our purpose. So let's worship together as we are welcome to the house of God. Uh, we're going to pray together. There's power in prayer. Let's Circumstances and situations, this has been 
uh, of this past week has been just a, a week. There's been there's been grief. There's been sorrow. Uh, but we want to continue to be supportive of our community, supportive of one another, uh, as we trust God through it all. Let's have our opening prayer, and then we'll have our opening scripture reading. Father, we give you thanks, Lord God, for the blessings of the day. This is a gift. We say thank you, Lord thank God. You. Just like we open up gifts for our birthday and for Christmas, today is a gift. And you have given us, all of you, in this day. Oh my, oh my, oh God. And so we want to worship you. We're so grateful to you. We have so much to be thankful for. God, may our worship be an expression of our gratitude. The wonderful, the most awesome gift of all, the gift of salvation. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for our sins. We accept you as our Lord and our Savior. Forgive us of our sin, of our trespasses. Live in our lives forevermore as we are determined to live for you. Our worship is an expression of that love that we have for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to read our scripture together. You would stand as you're physically able. As our scripture this morning is taken from uh, Jesus' teaching on the, he took his disciples to the mountaintop. Matthew chapter 7, verses 3, 4, and 5 for our opening scripture reading. Again, preparing us for life, preparing us for those details. Let's read in unison. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? <laughs> How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? <laughs> you hypocrite! First, take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Let the church say, Oh my. Oh my. <laughs>
God, about the anointing and laying on of hands, oh God. Yes. Thank you that our sin will recover. Yes. We yes. believe that, Lord God. We worship yes. you through that, oh God. We claim that. We speak that. We yes. speak the word yes. of faith that we are healed.
Yes, speak. Our purpose, as we know Jesus Christ, is to give glory to God.
glory in our lives. Give him glory. Give him glory. Hallelujah is the highest praise we can give unto him. Living in the details. Living in the details. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, that verse that we elevated on the last Sunday as we introduce uh, this, um, this topic, this discipleship journey. Discipleship. It's one thing to, to know God and to celebrate Him. This is one of the spaces, hopefully, that your heart can just resonate, that you can feel at times your heart beating with the heartbeat of God in your worship, in your celebration, uh, recognizing that we're also called to, to, to live out our purpose in the detail, our purpose, living it out. So the Apostle Paul teaches the church there in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, he says, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. There's no categorical uh, places in there that on Sundays I do it to the glory of God. Saturday night, Friday night, is to some other glory. But uh, whatever you do, action. Live, whatever you do, work, school, home, whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Amen. Whatever you do. You know, our lives do not have to be just a series of random events where we uh, try our best to, to hold on and to keep our heads above sea level. Life has not been really designed for that, that uh, just a, a random series of events. Uh, the challenge for us is to live a life of purpose and to live a life of purpose on purpose, to be intentional about living a life of purpose and not just going through life uh, seeing a series of random events, random things happening, no meaning, no insight, it's just, it's just life. Uh, I just live from moment to moment, and, and uh, there's so many who live with no purpose in their lives. And so for anyone who is struggling to find purpose, we say to them, give your lives to Jesus Christ. Surrender your life. Let him be not just your savior, saving you from sin, but to be Lord of your life, to be guide, to be director. And you will find purpose. The folks looking here for purpose, looking there for purpose, looking for material gains, looking for title gains, looking for this, looking for bank accounts, looking for cars, looking for houses to find their purpose. We can find the basic priority purpose for any life on this planet is found in Jesus Christ. Amen. Purpose. Remember how we have given a simple definition of purpose. Purpose is the ending from the beginning. The ending from the beginning. I attended a banquet last night in honor of a pastor. And the first item on that particular program is there was a gentleman asked to come in to give the purpose of the gathering. Purpose. The ending from the beginning. And so to stand up at the beginning and to talk about this is the purpose of this gathering, well, that resonated within my spirit, within my mind. Hey, that's purpose. Coming from the beginning, you're talking about the ending. That by the time you leave here, all of this will be accomplished. So look out, get ready, because purpose has been given. You know, when we surrender our old lives to the new life in Christ, we can know that our purpose now is to glorify God, right. oh. to glorify God, to make him look good yes. in you, to make him look good in you, even to make, uh, make God look good in your worship. 
to make God look good in how you're living your life and how you're doing your jobs and, and how you're fulfilling your desires in retirement. Making God look good in you. Amen. Give glory to yeah. God. Yeah. And so we do this in living our lives in relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. And we serve him and we seek to serve him faithfully as we continue to grow in grace, as we continue to grow in knowledge, and as we continue to grow in him. So our primary purpose in life is to give glory to God. Amen. All right. Can this be understood and accepted by you? That you understand that a primary, the primary purpose for all of our lives is to give glory to God. To yeah. allow God to yeah. look good in us, in how we're living. And whatever we do, we do it all to the glory yes. of God. Oh, yeah. yes. Understand that such a decision puts you in the kingdom of God. Right. In the kingdom of God. As we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are now kingdom dwellers. We dwell in God's kingdom where he reigns and where he rules. Yeah. Jesus says in John, the Gospel of John, chapter 18 and, and verse 36, when we talk about ruling, and, uh, Jesus says in, in John 18, 36, my kingdom is not of this world. <laughs> <laughs> my kingdom is not of this world. So as you're trying to gain your footing in life, as you're trying to gain your focus in life, in moving forward, when you understand that you are now a child of the king because you have asked Jesus Christ to come into your life, you understand that we're in his kingdom. And so I tell the church today, stop falling in love with this world system. Stop falling in love with this worldly system where you find it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Yeah, yeah. Where you find out it's an alpha male against another alpha male. Yeah. Where you find out it's drama versus drama. Where you find out it's hate versus hate. Stop falling in love with this world system. In Jesus Christ, you're now a part of his kingdom. His kingdom of righteousness. Oh, glory to God. That's a life of purpose. You understand that you, you have a different allegiance now as you are a part of the kingdom of God. So I ask you, what's your desire? Can you see yourself living out Matthew 6, 33? Seek first the kingdom of God. And all these other things will be added unto you. Right. Seek first the kingdom of God and all the things that you would need to make it in life. It'll be added unto you. And so the seeking, the seeking is not just tiptoeing and tapping your feet and just waiting for something to happen. But we're seeking God's kingdom, his reign, his rule. Jesus says, my father is always at work, even to this very day. You know, seeking God's kingdom, where God is working, how God is working. What's our desire? It's our desire to seek the kingdom of God. Right. Yes, Lord. If not, do we know how to break up with something? <laughs> do you know how to commit to something else? Right. Seek first the kingdom of yes, God. Yes, yes. Understand that you were born into this world system. Yeah. Dog eat dog, alpha male against yeah. alpha male. You gotta do this. I'm I'm from the hood. I'm a gangster. I gotta yeah. do this. Yeah. This is how you live. Ah, ah. Stop falling in love with that. Right. Yes. Live in the kingdom of God. Understand yeah. that there are angels encamped around about you. Because I'm seeking first the kingdom of God. Living for him. I seek first God's kingdom. Ah. Yes, live to glorify God. Live in the kingdom of God. Explore what God has for you in the kingdom. Yes. Right. God has for you in the kingdom being godly parents, being godly grandparents. He has for you in the kingdom even the parenting capabilities to raise your children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. And as they grow old, they won't turn back from what God has aligned for their lives. 
for what God has for you in the kingdom, whether it's advocating or helping, the least of these, if you've been called to serve, the least of these, explore what God has for you in the kingdom. Maybe even in leading others in some type of endeavor. Explore what God has for you in his kingdom. Maybe your purpose can be even serving others. You've been called to serve others, to help others along the way. Maybe your calling is to teach. Maybe your calling is to love children. Finding that particular purpose, it's in God's kingdom. Maybe your purpose, your calling is in encouraging someone else. Encouraging others who have come across your pathway, who may be struggling with life situations and circumstances. That could be your purpose. Yep. The very seasons of your life. Right. So now as we explore, we've been pondering purpose in life. The purpose that God has granted unto us. The, 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 the ending, even from the beginning. We know we've got to jump into the details. We have a, as we have just a, a, a moment, we all understand that our primary purpose is to glorify God. Okay, how do we jump into details of even that? Your calling is in regards to parenting or grandparenting. Your calling is into teaching or encouraging others. We jump into the details, and we know it's an invention. We know it's an invention. We understand that we got to go through the details. And that's where we've come alongside of you, even during these uh, couple of weeks, to encourage us how to go through the details. As I said earlier, I want to share a case study with you. And the case study is that uh, during the life and the times of the Apostle Paul, right? All right? Paul accepts the purpose to live to glorify God, right? As our text of Scripture said in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, that uh, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. So he accepts that primary purpose in his life. Yeah. But God also has another specific purpose for the Apostle Paul. We find this stated in Acts chapter 23, verse 11. Acts 23, verse 11. It reads in one verse, the following night, the Lord stood near Paul and said, Take courage! As you have testified about me in Jerusalem, so you might also testify in Rome. So, Paul's primary purpose is to glorify God, make God look good in him. But now we see Paul having a specific purpose, and his specific purpose is to preach in Rome. To preach in Rome. Okay, Paul, the Lord has spoken to you. And I know a lot of times, you, you know, you and I, if God would just tell me, God would just speak to me. You know, I remember that. I've heard preachers say, God oh, talk to me like a man. Okay. But again, we have his word that speaks to us. Even as we see, even in, as we read the word and we find and identify our purpose, our, our callings in, in, in life. Here, one of the specific purposes for Paul was to preach in Rome. Now, what's so significant about this is the daily details that Paul had to live out to get to the purpose of preaching in Rome. It wasn't about, okay, Paul, you're going to preach in Rome. Understand that at the time that Paul received this, he was over 1,200 miles away from Rome. All right. Remember, there were, there were no airplanes. There were no trains. Right. There were no cars, no all day movies. All right. Okay. And so you were on foot or you went by ship. Yes. Okay? So understand that, okay, preaching Rome. Let me get up and buy my ticket. I'm going to Rome right now to preach to, to see him. Um, no, that's not how it happened. That's not how it lived now to preach in Rome. And so I lift up Acts, the Acts chapters 21 through 28. Acts 21 through 28. If you have time during the week, even as you hear uh, what the message is saying, to, to look at the details, the daily details, what Paul had to go through to get to the point to fulfill the Lord's purpose for him to preach in Rome. Okay? 
And so as we, we, we look at Acts 21 through 32 through 28, the, the ending of the book of Acts, is loaded with, de with details about Paul living in purpose. And friends, it's nothing pretty. It's nothing pretty what Paul had to go through. Uh, and so even as you would find time during the week to, to, to read how, how Paul uh, got to the point where he were, was able to preach in Rome, and even as we share together, Feel free, all I can do is a summary of the time that's given unto me. But feel free to align your purpose with the daily details of your life and seeing how Paul dealt with the daily details in his life. Summary of what we find in Acts chapter 21 through chapters 28. Paul was in Jerusalem, and again, to get to Rome on a ship. He had to travel over 1,200 miles, over 1,200 miles. Some of you have been on a cruise liner that uh, you've been on Carnival, and you have traveled from, uh, from New Orleans to Cancun or Cozumel or wherever those places are, that you go to bed one night and wake up the next and you're almost there. It, it didn't quite work like that, okay? And so in between all this time from Jerusalem, all the way to Rome, over 1,200 uh, miles. Um, in between all of this, Paul was arrested, and he was put in jail. All right. Paul, you're supposed to go preach in Rome. Paul was arrested, and he was put in jail. Acts chapter 21 through chapter 28. And again, a quick summary of, of all of these chapters. Paul is arrested in Jerusalem. He's taken to Caesarea, where he defends himself against false charges. He shares his conversation and testifies about Jesus Christ. He was converted. He was once a one who persecuted the church, and now he served the church and served the Lord of the church. And he defends himself against all of these false charges. Paul's nephew, Scripture says, overhears a plot by 50 Jewish leaders. They wanted to kill Paul, and they were going to get the help of the Sanhedrin. And, and uh, Paul's nephew hears of this particular plot, and he tells the guards, the Roman guards, what's getting ready to go down. You know, the governor agrees to, to hold a trial, but Paul accusers don't have a case. They came, they made the best case they possibly, but they don't have a case. But the governor allows Paul to stay in prison for two years. Two years, no verdict being given, no action being given. Two years, he's in jail. Again, what's, what's his purpose? Preach in Rome. Preach in Rome. Tell him, talk about Jesus Christ in Rome. And here he is, placed in jail uh, unlawfully. And so, uh, again, there was another governor, as the scripture goes on, uh, who comes into to, to power. And uh, he sends Paul to Rome for the trial to be heard. Okay, what's the purpose of Paul? What's Paul's purpose? To go where? Preach to Rome. preach in Rome. Yeah. And here he is. He spent two years in prison. Another governor comes up and sees that there's a dock in there. Well, we're going to send you to Rome to go have your case heard over there. Yeah. And so that, that, that the scripture goes, while, while, while traveling to Rome as a prisoner, Paul is shipwrecked on an island. They go through a hurricane. It's called a northeaster, but it's like a hurricane. And it lasted 14 days and 14 nights. Oh, my goodness. We did a hurricane one day and we threw. So they're on that ship for 14 days and 14 nights going through that northeaster, going through hurricane force winds. But all the time, Paul kept encouraging the soldiers. Don't panic. Don't leave the boat. You're not going to make it if you leave the boat. Right. You're not going to make it. Y'all eat. Y'all hadn't eaten in two weeks. Come on, y'all eat. Get it. Why is Apostle Paul talking like that? Don't worry. We're going to make it. Why is he talking like that? Because he's been called to a purpose. And what his purpose is? To preach in Rome. So now look, going through heartaches, going through difficulties, it looks like I'm going to yeah, make it. Yeah. But when you know God's purpose for your life, don't worry. You're going to get there. You're going to get there. When you look at your life, when you see the value of you finding your purpose in life, what God has called you to be about.
I understand about doctor's reports. I understand about uh, various things that the doctors tell you right. you got to deal with. I understand about, lo about loss. I understand about grief. I understand about the challenges. Understand about all of that. But when you find Come the on now. Yeah. Right, right, right. When you know yeah. that you've been called to oh, live yeah. for him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you may get, you, the bank may tell you you don't have any money. Yeah. Oh, but you know that God is a provider oh, for yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. You continue to live by his principles. Oh, God, what you have me to do to understand oh, that even in my giving, that's how I receive oh, living in purpose. Yes. 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 And strengthening us yes. for God's call on our lives. Yes. The Apostle Paul helps us today. Whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Yeah. For the glory of God. And understand that those around you did not go understand. Mm -hmm. Just like those sailors didn't understand Paul. That scripture, all those chapters talk about they wanted to jump overboard. They wanted to get on the life raft and get off of that ship in that storm. Paul says, you better not go. You're not going to make it. If you're alone with me, you're going to make it. Sometimes those who are on the ride with you, your family, yeah. let them know, you better not leave me. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. It's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. As we give glory to God and to live for him. Once you have that purpose, whatever it may be, the simple purposes, again, God's not calling everybody to preach. But find that purpose. Yeah. Dig yeah. in your heart, your spirit, as you dig into the word. God, what do you call me to do? And sometimes it's just looking around what you're already engaged in. That's why I even use a simple analogy of a parent of a grandparent. Something simple and basic. Don't get discouraged. Yes. Don't yes. give up. Live in the purpose. On purpose. Yes. Thanks be to God. I want to pray with you today. I want to encourage you. As you live in purpose and know what God has in store for you. Yes. Ah, living out the details may be difficult. Hmm. But understand that storms come. Snakes come. Don't worry. We're going to make it. I'm on assignment by God. I have a purpose that's given to me by God. And God's going to get the glory because if there's never a, a trial that comes, then we're tempted to say, look what I did. Look what I have accomplished. Sometimes God just has to show us that it has to be all about me. All of me or it's nothing. God reminds us that we're going to trust him through every storm in our lives. Through every challenge. Well, yes. uh, you just can't be living in the kingdom of God. Yes. Giving it all to him. Yes. All to him. Yes. Father, we thank you, Lord God. Thank you. For the opportunity to just pray together this morning. Thank you for life, oh God. Sometimes it gets crazy. Sometimes it gets mixed up and confused, oh God. But I thank you. That we can renew our commitment to you loved us so much that you sent your son Jesus Christ. We accept him as our Lord and Savior. We want to be committed unto him as we live in relationship. We want to overcome our own desires, our own ways. May it no longer be about my way and my desires, but may it be about you, oh God. That I can learn, oh God, how to Tame my desires and surrender all into this kingdom. May we find out how we can get lost in this kingdom. How we can break our commitment to the world system, oh God, that's built up just to destroy others. It's a peace that you want to give us, oh God. Even as you give us our purpose, that we don't have to live watching over our shoulders. We don't have to live what somebody else is going to do to me. Because you're giving us purpose, oh God. Yes, yes, Lord. To God be the glory. Yes. Great things he has done, oh God. And as we explore more and more what you have in store for us, we praise your name, we bless your name, oh God. 
May we grow up in you. May we grow up in our discipleship walk, oh God, taking seriously more than we've ever done before. Yeah. How to find out more about this kingdom and less about this world system. Mm -hmm. May we avail ourselves to opportunities to become more and more like Christ. Yeah. Opportunities yeah. to learn how to surrender more and more to you, oh, oh God. Oh, yes, Lord. And our lives can be lived to your glory. Yes. It's called purpose, oh God. So bless us. Bless those under the sound of my voice. Bless this fellowship, oh God. That we can be more committed than ever to live a life of purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Celebrate him. You may be seated. The presence of the Lord this morning. Thank you again for your attentiveness to the word. Living in the details. Living in the details. We have one more case study that we want to share with you. We'll share that case study coming up in the um, on next Sunday, Lord willing, uh, as again, just want to help us to learn how to live in the details. It's one thing to know that God has called me to do this, God has called me to do that, but to live in those details and to how to maneuver our ways through. But we want to uh, encourage us, to train us, to equip us with what God has in store for us. Mrs. Dan. Uh, Pastor, sorry to interrupt you, but you said a, a chapter of John 18, but I didn't get the verse. 3036. 30, 30, 30. 8, 1836. 1836. Yeah, yeah, very good question. And again, those chapters in Acts are Acts chapter 21 through 28. Uh, I got the Acts. I just okay, okay. Maybe 18. Okay. Some of y'all might be reading 1836. My kingdom is not of this world. Amen. Thank you so much. You got it. Bless the Lord. Thank you. All right, all right, so again, in our, in our teaching time, the disciple is coming Wednesday night. Uh, again, want to get back. I, I just can't leave it alone just quite yet. Uh, two minutes ago, again, just as we look at, at um, Ephesians chapter 6, about we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Uh, last time on the 14th of, of August, wanted to show us what battle is. The devil schemes. Sometimes we just lose it all when we're dealing with People, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but to understand, okay, devil, what you're trying to do with me? What you're trying to do with me? What you're trying to, what scheme are you using in me? We see who you're using to get at me, but that's not who we fight. That's not who we come against. The devil is trying to do something to destroy us. So this reason I want to show us how we can put on the armor. We know what the full armor of God is as it's listed there uh, as we understand the belt of truth, the breast, breastplate of righteousness, feet fitted with preparation that comes from the gospel of peace, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith. We understand that, but as the devil comes against us, how can we put it on? What does it mean? What does it look like to put on the full armor of God? So when we've done all to stand, we'll stand therefore fully armed. So again, we want to uh, kind of lead us in, in uh, that teaching time this coming Wednesday uh, as uh, we are understanding the battle that we are in, the real battle that we're in. So thanks be to God for that. So good to have each and every one of you here on this beautiful Sunday. The Sunday before it's going to start raining. Yes, sir. It's going to start raining. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Hold on. It's been, it's been a month. Just to say, it's been a month. But uh, we, whatever God says, He's in control. He's yeah. in charge. Yeah. Sorry. It's over right. But you know what? We haven't had to worry about in the month of August. So, again, next Sunday, it'll be a whole nother month, y'all. Yeah. Next Sunday, we're coming together September 1. September 1. Coming up uh, next Sunday. So, enjoy the ending of this month, this last uh, week as uh, uh, we live that out. Again, the Wednesday night piece uh, that, uh, that we'll lift up. And, um, again, so good to have all you here. So good to have Quentin and DeQuentin here. 
Amen. We just wrapping our arms around it. Uh, the Lord bless you. The Lord is helping you to, to see today. The Lord bless you indeed. Thanks be to thanks be to God. And uh, let me just go ahead and say this on, on your behalf, and even for those who have birthdays in the month of August. We got some cake and some punch for you after church. Those of you, especially who have birthdays in August, oh, you got a birthday in July, you too. Somebody has a birthday in September, it's your birthday. Okay, get some cake, get some punch on, on your way out. Okay, so this is God. Amen, amen, amen. All right, all right. Uh, thanks for your uh, faithfulness in, in giving. Ministry goes forth even as you give, as you set your allotments, as you uh, release your faith in your giving. Uh, you're going to see the faithfulness of the Lord because we're living in God's kingdom. Living in God's kingdom. We're just soldiers in this world's uh, system. We're just soldiers. We're just passing through. Amen. Passing through. It's like some of y'all used to pass through some of the communities and neighborhoods. You know you would stand there. Look, I'm just passing through. I don't have no business here. So I'm just passing through. No need to stop. No need to delay. Just passing through. I remember years ago, there was uh, a son driving through one of the communities in North Louisiana. He stopped and told and called his mom, I'm, I'm so-and-so place. Uh, what you doing there? Boy, you better get out of that place. Get out of that place. We are soldier. We are soldier. That's what we are in this world system. We just passing through. We are kingdom citizens. Kingdom residents. And may the Lord bless you this week as you go through the kingdom. Again, so glad that all of you are here. Let's stand together. We're going to ready ourselves for our benediction. We're going to ready ourselves to go scatter. Scatter being in church. Scatter. Scatter being in the church. And may the Spirit, may the Lord's Spirit wench you. And when you scatter and you, you're wet, you kind of dissolve. And you just make a difference right where you are. When you have fertilizer, when you fertilize in the garden, you, you, you throw the fertilizer out. You water it. And what happens that fertilizer, you know, it absorbs and then it what? It just spreads out. So may you just spread out. As the storms may hit you in, like, spread out. And what you do, you help others to grow around you. That's what fertilizers do. Spiritual fertilizers. Let's have a blessed week indeed. Be encouraged. Let's pray for uh, Sister Jean Gidry. Uh, Brother Mark reached out to me today. She's in the hospital. They're doing good, but they've got some tests and things that are going on. Some blockages that they want to kind of address. Uh, so, again, doing good. But let's lift up uh, Sister Jean from being as we have our, our benediction. Let's pray together. Father, we give you thanks, Lord God, for the blessings of the day, oh God. We thank you for all that you have done, even throughout this week. Thank you, Lord God, that you've been with our students, Lord God. Thank you for our college students who have started another semester. And even for the support that they're receiving, oh God. We pray, Lord God, that that may be heartfelt and that they may move forward in a blessed semester, oh God. Father, you know the plans that you have for us. And I thank you, Lord, that our steps will be ordered by your word. Now bless us as we live out the details of our purpose throughout this week, oh God. Give us our spiritual eyes that we can see and to be attuned unto that. Bless us as we go and may our lives be lived to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you as you lay hands of the ushers.